Dear friends, now as a contribution to the second online international basic income march, we will make an interview with our dear friend Malcolm Tori. Dear Malcolm, very welcome. Well, thank you for the invitation. Uh, dear friends, most of you know him, but let me share short information about dear Malcolm. Malcolm Tori has been involved in the basic income debate for nearly 40 years. For 20 of those years, he was secretary and, the, and then director of the Citizens Basic Income Trust in the United Kingdom. And for five years, he was BN's Basic Income Earth Network's general manager. He is now BN's treasurer. Uh, Malcolm has written several books about basic income. And in 2019, Palgrave Macmillan published the Palgrave International Handbook of Basic Income that he had edited. This book is a very interesting book, and hopefully we will hear uh, details about it today uh, from our dear friend Malcolm. Uh, dear Malcolm, uh, how did you first get involved in the basic income debate? Maybe you would like to start like this. I'd be happy to start like that. It was over 40 years ago um, that for two years I worked in a government office administering means-tested benefits. Um, I was sitting on one side of the counter and the claimants were sitting on the other side and behind me were the staff who did the calculations of their benefits. And we all knew how damaging these means-tested benefits were to the people claiming them. The questions that I had to ask the people who came to claim their benefits were extremely intrusive. Um, and uh, and we, we found it difficult, they found it difficult, and the, the, the rules were just so complicated that not only did they not understand them, but we didn't either. And we all knew that something better was needed. Um, our favourite benefit was child benefit, which went unconditionally to every child. And, and we, we didn't see why this, this um, way of doing it shouldn't be an increasing part of the system. But I then left and became a priest in the Church of England and found myself serving a parish in which the department that ran me, Sister Benefits, had its headquarters. And I was invited to its summer school, which was a bit of a surprise. And one of the lecturers was Mimi Parker, Hermione Parker, who in 1982 had researched the basic income scheme that Brandon Reese Williams MP uh, submitted to a parliamentary committee and um, in 1984 two years after that um, I was invited to join a small group that was researching the idea of a basic income and uh, it, that became the basic income research group and then the citizens income trust the citizens basic income trust it was the first organization set up in modern times to research the idea of an unconditional income for everyone and I've, I've been involved in the debate ever since. Um, it's been an interesting ride in the sense that when we first started back in 1984, there were very few people interested in the idea. Um, and now, as you know, it's a global debate with researchers all over the world and um, many advocates for it, both organizations and individuals. Um, and and it, it has been, fascinating to watch that change and very satisfying to do so. Um, dear Malcolm, very interesting story. In fact, uh, we were planning to have an interview regarding the uh, book, the Palgrave International Handbook of Basic Income, but your involvement to the Basic Income debate, the story of your involvement is also very interesting. Thank you very much. Uh, can you say a few words about this book? I think uh, it is it is a one, uh, one, I shouldn't, uh, one of the reference book, can we consider it as a reference book? Would you like to say anything yeah, about it? It's, a, it's a definitely a reference book. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really a book for libraries um, and it's for researchers to use um, in their, either digital, digitally or as a, a hardback book in their libraries. Um, I doubt if many individuals will be buying it, partly because of the cost. Um, these books tend to be very expensive um, and this one I'm afraid is but if anybody wants to read it then their library should be able to get hold of it for them 
um yeah it, it's a it, it's uh, a, it's an interest it's an interest a fascinating project to put it together and and the members of bn the basic income earth network uh, many of them were extremely helpful in contributing to that process uh, can, can you give a few details about um in what sense is this book international or how many different chapters are in the book and uh, their details it might be very interesting to our friends yes i, I can do that um in, in, it's international in several different senses first of all it's an international group of authors there are 52 authors represented in this book um, some of the chapters are written jointly by two or three authors some of the chapters have different sections by different authors some chapters are written by single authors it depends on the subject and who was an expert in that field. Um, and the, it adds up to 52 authors altogether, and they are from five different continents. Um, and so in that sense, it's an international book. Some of the groups of authors within each chapter are international as well. And I tried to put together um, some younger scholars with some uh, more experienced uh, scholars who who could work together on producing some of these chapters, which was a very creative process, um, both for the book itself and for the young scholars themselves who were able to work with experienced people in the field. Um, it's also international in the sense that uh, it's about an international debate. Um, uh, some of the chapters have a tendency towards one particular country or or area, but on the whole, the chapters are about the whole of the global debate. Um, and in that sense, it's it's international as well. I'll, I'll, I'll show you the, the um, chapters. Let me start, uh, start a, a slide show. I'm going to, oops, that doesn't work very well. I'm going to share my screen. I hope I've got that right. Can you see my screen, Ali? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll, um, let's uh, change the, put the slideshow on. Uh, here's the cover of the handbook. Um, it's an international handbook. Um, handbook in the sense that it tries to cover the whole of the basic income debate in I mean, obviously it's very difficult to do that nowadays because it is such a, a broad and widespread debate but at least we did our best with this handbook um i have to say first of all that it was published two years ago now nearly um now that means that that it's it's out of date um mm -hmm. whether there'll ever be another one i don't know but it's still well worth reading and some of the chapters of course are only out of date in relation to details, but I'll show you the chapter titles. There's an introduction. The first, the, the second chapter is about definitions. It's essential whenever we're discussing basic income to be clear about definitions. And there were some really good sessions at the recent Congress about that subject and debate and um, will continue on that important matter. Um, in any research project, it's important that everybody should be on the same page as to what the basic income definition is, even though around the world there might be diversity. Within a particular project, you have to be clear about the definition and every participant has to stick to it. Otherwise, the project as a whole doesn't make sense. And so this chapter offers a clear definition of basic income and its characteristics. And the, all of the 52 authors uh, stuck to that definition as they wrote their chapters. Carl Weidequist, um, uh, another long-standing scholar in the field, uh, wrote, a, wrote a brief history of the basic income debate, um, uh, designing his chapter around what he calls three waves of support. Um, then there are several chapters all about the likely effects of a basic income. 
um, employment market effects, uh, social effects, some effects of basic income on economic variables and ecological effects. And as you will probably see, three of those chapters are by groups of authors and those authors are from uh, different parts of the world. Um, the first chapter from the UK, uh, Korea, and chapter four from UK, Korea, and the United States. Um, chapter five is by a single author from Australia. Chapter six is by a German younger researcher working with Meghnad Desai, a long-standing uh, economics academic. And the chapter on ecological effects of basic income um, is, is, is um, American and German and uh, by Michael Howard, Jorge Pinto and Ulrich Schachneider. I think I've got the countries correct. So we had a, an interesting problem when we listed the contributors, deciding where they were from. Um, because uh, many people now uh, travel around the world and live in different places from time to time. And so deciding where somebody belongs was, was, was really quite difficult when we wrote the list of contributors. Um, so for instance, Carl is um, uh, American, but works in Qatar. And uh, Almaz Zelika is, uh, who's, who's one of the other authors later on, um, uh, who's one of the, the authors here in the gender um, chapter. Uh, she's American, but works in China and, and so on. Um, the gender um, effects of basic income chapter eight were written by Annie Miller, a very long standing um, uh, participant in this debate and Toru Yamamori. Um, Anne is from Scotland, Toru from Japan, Almers from America or China, depending on how you want to list her. The third part of the book, is all about feasibility and implementation. The reason for this is that the debate has changed over the years, and I've seen this in the books that I've been asked to write. And so um, the debate was, first of all, largely about whether it's a good idea to implement basic income. That is, is it desirable? Um, would it have effects that we would want? But I noticed that around um, about 10 years ago, the debate began to change in the UK and in other places as well. And it was much more about feasibility. That is, would it actually be possible to implement basic income? So is, is it feasible? And then the debate changed again um, around five years ago. Uh, and there was much more in it about how in practice we would implement a basic income? How would we actually do it in a particular place or a particular group of countries or so on? And there was more of that in the debate. And so this third section of the book was, was about feasibility and implementation with an introduction from me. Um, and then uh, a chapter about alternative funding methods, which, as you will know, are, is now a very important part of the debate. This was by representatives of a variety of different funding methods for basic income. Uh, analysis of the financial effects of basic income has become a, an extremely important part of the debate now. And um, the Freiburg Basic uh, uh, Institute for Basic Income Studies has now set up a micro simulation uh, research group because uh, it, evaluating the financial effects of a, of a variety of basic income schemes has now become extremely important to do. And so, and so that, that's a chapter about how to analyze the financial effects of basic incomes. We have a chapter about alternatives to basic income, which are also an important part of the debate. Uh, Benjamin Leff writes about the United States uh, earned income tax credits and uh, proposals for amending those. Andrew Percy writes about universal basic services, and he concludes at the end of his section that there is no conflict between basic income and universal basic services. Uh, Michael Storey writes about a negative income tax and Raki Schlinder uh, writes about a job guarantee, um, which he ends up being not at all keen on, which I thought was quite interesting. Uh, there's then a chapter about uh, framing basic income from uh, as a, a really, really interesting international, really international chapter by 
Johanna, who's Finnish, Lyra, who's Spanish, and Jenna, who's Canadian. Um, and uh, we, uh, it's about how the media understand basic income and, and how the, the idea is understood. And it's an important chapter for, for, for advocates to understand um, as to how messages can be framed, how a basic income can be described, um, and so, uh, how it can be effective in the, the wider debate. Then a chapter by a, the, the previous chair of the Basic Income Earth Network, Louise Hart. Then part four, is that? Yeah, that's then part four. Um, pilot projects and other experiments. These have been a really important part of the debate over the past um, 15 years now. Um, and so there's chapter again from Carl about the negative income tax experience of the 1970s in the United States and Canada with a lot of detail of those and uh, the ways in which the messaging about those um, was, was, uh, was not entirely accurate, let, let's put it that way, and which, which gave people a wrong impression of how they had turned out. They turned out a great deal better and uh, the, the initial messaging suggested. There's a chapter about Brazil, which has been a really important country in the debate. Um, so we needed a chapter about Brazil, about its various experiments, and about the um, legislation which the Brazilian parliament passed to move towards a basic income. Uh, and uh, so we asked for that. And, then Iran's cash subsidy program. Um, by accident, Iran is probably the closest we've ever got uh, to a national basic income. Um, and, and that's a, a really well, a, 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 a chapter by two Iranians who understand what's happened and the significance of that event. We then have a uh, chapter about Namibia. All of these chapters about experiments are by the people who were intimately involved with them. Um, and so it's uh, Claudia and Dirk and, and Nicolai from um, about the Namib Namibian project, uh, Sarath Dabala, currently chair of Basic Income Earth Network, about the Indian pilot projects, uh, Jurgen, Antti, and uh, Baiko about the Finnish Basic Income Experiment. And then we have a, a wide variety of different um, experiments and proposals for experiments in Spain, uh, Netherlands, Scotland, uh, Switzerland, um, the Eastern European countries, uh, and um, Korea, from people intimately involved in those. Some of them are discussions about future experiments. Some of them are experiments that have happened of various kinds. Some of them basic income experiments, some of them not, but with lessons to teach the basic income debate. Part five is all about ideas, political and ethical perspectives, because these have been very important in the debate as well, of course. Um, Philippe Van Parish's contribution, vast contribution to the debate has, has been mainly in the field of ideas. And um, there have been a lot of other contributions to that part of the debate. And so there's a chapter on libertarian perspectives from Miranda and Otto, again, international um, uh, chapter with uh, Miranda, an experienced American scholar working with Otto, a younger Finnish scholar. We then have a chapter on socialist arguments. David, Daniel and Mahish, um, they wrote that together. We have a chapter from Joe Crisp and Luke Martinelli from the University of Bath on the idea that basic income is actually neither left nor right. And there's a really important aspect of this debate. The basic income idea does not fit the normal political spectrum. It doesn't belong to any particular um, political view. It can belong to all of them. Uh, trade unions and their changing, their shifting, continually shifting attitudes and diverse attitudes to basic income has always been an important aspect of the 
place can come debate in modern times and it will continue to be so and this chapter is by Troy and John both from Australia um, and then a chapter on the ethics of basic income from Simon Birnbaum in Sweden. Um, I offer a few tentative conclusions at the end but they can only be tentative because there's such a vast amount of material in this handbook and it covers so many different aspects of the debate that actually writing a concluding chapter is extremely difficult. And so it has turned out really very tentative. Um, so that's that's the handbook. Uh, it, as you can see, it covers a vast amount of material and we hope that it covers as well as you could manage um, really the, the whole of the global basic income debate, which is, and, and the, the diversity we have here just shows how widespread and lively that debate now is. It's a, it's a snapshot of where ideas, projects and research had got to at that point, um, two or three years ago. Uh, obviously, huge amounts have changed since then. Books like this can never keep up with the speed of change of this debate. And I'll, I'll come to that issue again. Um, that may be with a, with a later question. Okay. Uh, dear Malcolm, it's very interesting. I mean, uh, every chapter is like an independent book. And maybe well, yes, it, it, it can feel like that. And, no, and people, and, people who read the book, it's not a book to be read all the way through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, it, maybe even we should have independent sessions almost to every chapter. Oh, well, well, of course, what you really need to do is invite these authors. I mean, it, would take, it, would, it would take you quite a long time to get through all, all of these authors. Um, but to invite the authors to yeah. talk about their chapters would be a, a really educational process. Yeah, it might be interesting. Uh, we should discuss this issue with our friends during the worldwide meetings of UBI Advocates and UBI Networks. Very, very interesting. Thank you very much uh, for these details regarding uh, Paul Grave International Handbook of Basic Income. Very interesting. Uh, dear Malcolm, we know that you have other books too. Would you like to mention their names too? Taking this opportunity, we would like to hear them too. I mean- uh, I, will, I will be happy to do that. Yes, I'll, I'll show you a few of them. Um, in it, fact, I'll show you all of them. Um, Money for Everyone was published in 2013. Um, before that in the UK, um, uh, 13 years before that, two introductions to the subject have been published, one by Tony Walter um, and one by Mimi Parker, which was called uh, Instead of the Doll, which was full of her usual tables and graphs and was, was um, an early example of uh, financial analysis of basic income schemes. Uh, Tony Walters was more of a general shorter introduction relating to ideas. Um, whoops, not yet. Um, uh, the, but it had been a long time since a general introduction had been published anywhere in the world, really. And, and as I say, it was over 10 years since one had been published in the UK. And so the policy press asked me if I would write a general introduction to the subject, which I did. It's money for everyone. Why we need a citizen's income. Uh, citizen's income had become the term for basic income in the UK uh, around 1992 for various reasons. And, uh, and these, the terminology has shifted citizen's income, basic income, citizen's basic income. They all mean the same thing. They all mean a basic income, an unconditional income for every individual. But you'll sometimes see the term citizen's income on some of my books. Um, so, so that was a general introduction, mainly about yeah. would, would basic income be a good idea. Then I was asked by the policy press four years later to, to revise the book so that they could publish the second edition. I read the book and realised just how out of date it had become very quickly. And it was impossible to revise it and for it still to be relevant. And so I actually had to write a new book. Um, there are bits of the old book in it, um, but the, the, the publisher decided to give it a new title. Um, that's the publisher's title for it. Uh, we kept the same 
we kept the same image on the front to make it clear that this yeah. was actually a follow-up yeah. to the to the original book um but it, it's a very different book and was much more about feasibility and implementation in it as i as i said because the debate had changed substantially in those five years this was published in 2018 2015, I was asked for a short, cheap paperback about basic income, and so I wrote this one, 101 Reasons. I actually started off with a longer list than 101, had to cut it, and have sometimes regretted some of the ones that I had to cut. Mm -hmm. um, and it just shows you how many good reasons there are for, for basic income. Um, feasibility had become a really important part of the debate by about 2014, 2015. So in 2016, Paul Grave Macmillan published this book, The Feasibility of Citizens' Income. This, the books I've just shown you um, from Policy Press are relatively cheap paperbacks. This was a much more expensive academic hardback book um, because it, it's full of research about feasibility. And if anybody's really interested in whether a basic income is feasible, then this is the book they should be perhaps borrowing from their library rather than buying. Uh, I was asked for a book um, for the churches, uh, the Christian churches, and so I wrote Citizens Basic Income and Christian Social Policy, which Darth and Longman and Todd published. Um, it's again, cheap paperback, in fact, an extremely cheap paperback. I think it's still five pounds on their website. Um, you go to the Darth and Longman and Todd website, um, which is quite remarkable for a, a, a book today. Um, there had never been uh, a multidisciplinary study, um, and so Edward Elgar asked me if I would write one. Um, and uh, what it is, is each chapter starts off from a different academic discipline, say sociology or um, social administration, the law, history, economics, and so on and asks what that discipline has to say about basic income and also what basic income has to contribute to that discipline's ongoing development and and so th this was published uh, a couple of years ago um no it wasn't published just last year um it, it 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 was a fascinating book to write because i had to get involved in academic disciplines i'd never had much to do with before um, so uh, if you're interested in what a particular discipline has to say about basic income, this is the book uh, to go to. I've written a number of chapters in other people's books. Um, uh, this one, for instance, this is just one example, um, edited by Christopher Deeming. This has a chapter in it about how minimum income standards relate to the basic income debate. And I, I gave a presentation at the recent PN Congress on that chapter if anybody happened to be in that session. Uh, I do uh, quite a lot of micro simulation research. This is a computer program that has coded into it all of the tax and benefits regulations of a country, in this case the UK, and you pass through it a vast amount of financial data on a statistically significant sample of households in the country to produce a lot of useful statistics. You can then learn how to rewrite the program. So you can you can insert basic incomes into it and change existing tax and benefits regulations. Then you put the data through it again to obtain a whole new set of statistics. You can then compare the two sets and that will tell you what effects your basic income scheme would have in the real world. It's an extremely important tool that we now have and it can evaluate um, illustrative basic income schemes. Um, and it's, it, it provides real world information about what would happen if we had that kind of basic income scheme. This is my most recent piece. I'm now being asked <coughs> to write one about Wales um, in particular, which will come out fairly soon, I hope. Um, so that's, that's my most recent published uh, version. Uh, here's the most recent book, Basic Income History. It's, um, it's a history. It's the first comprehensive history of basic income, and it was published very recently. Um, again, unfortunately, it's a rather expensive hardback, but the electronic version of it is much cheaper. Um, Edward Elgar have a policy of expensive hardbacks, but cheaper electronic versions, so people may well want to, to look at that. 
if anybody's interested in these books and wants to look at where the publishers um, are and where their websites are, then you can simply go to that website, tori.org.uk, and basic income on the end. Um, and that will take you to all of those books and the publishers' websites of all of them. Very, very interesting. Uh, thank you very much, dear Malcolm. Uh, as far as I remember, I know you from 2016. Am I correct? Uh, something like that. Yes. South Korea meeting. It must be. You were in South Korea, in Seoul, right? Oh, actually, no, I wasn't in South Korea. No, it must be after that, Ali. Um, um, and, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't get to South, the South Korea. Portugal, then. 2016. Um, Lisbon? Must be Lisbon. Yeah, it was Lisbon. I, I've been to, to all of the... So I, I know there, there, there have been see, and uh, there have been periods when my life has been extremely busy for a variety of reasons. Yeah. So yeah. I got to a couple of the early congresses in Paris in 1992 and in London in 1994, which I helped to organise. Um, and then there was quite a big gap. I was a full time priest in the Church of England in very busy parishes and. Um, and we had young children and just getting away for that period yeah, became yeah. really very difficult. Um, but I, I, I was able to start going again in 2017. Um, yeah, yeah. Been, no been to all of them since then. Yeah. Yeah. I think the BN Congresses are a vital part of the basic income debate. They enable yeah. um, people to exchange good practice, to get to know each other, to exchange research results. Um, and I think the, the one that the Glasgow managed to run online this time is a superb event, especially given the problems of, of the pandemic and having to do it all online. I think that they did extremely well. And, and the, the last face-to-face -face one we had in Hyderabad yeah. it was brilliant in 2019. And, and so I, I look forward to what, what Australia managed to put together next year. No, my point was, uh, I know you then more than four years, yeah. I, I know you, but now I know you much better after this interview. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure to get to know you too, Ali. And I've, um, I, it may not be entirely relevant to this interview, but it was a pleasure to come and see you in Istanbul. Um, no, it was our pleasure. It was see our you pleasure. on your home territory. Yeah. Uh, dear Malcolm, as a last question, uh, as a senior advocate, basic income advocate, do you have any suggestions to the basic income advocates? I mean. Maybe, um, uh, yeah, yes, I, I suppose I, in one sense, I don't, um, in the sense that everywhere basic income is debated is different. And so what happens in one country, one context, will not necessarily tell someone in another context what might be useful for them to do. So I think within each country, it's essential that people work together, talk to each other, um, construct projects together and, and so on. Um, and in particular, that people who do research and people who, who are more, um, might call themselves activists, should work closely together. And people who have uh, varying ideas um, should work together. Um, now, I also think that the, as well as people within each country working closely together, people around the world do need to work closely together, um, but not in not on the details in one sense, because those have to be dealt with within each country. Yeah. But we, we can all share good ideas. We can all come to understand some of what's going on in other countries. There may well be things that we can learn from each other around the world. And that, that's one of the reasons we put that handbook together so that, that we could learn so much together. And it was a, a extremely useful yeah. uh, process yeah. for the authors as well. Um, but one of the, one of the things we, we all agree on is that we want to see a basic income implemented. That's, that's at the heart of, of what we are all doing because we know the benefits that that would provide. We know that a secure layer of income yeah be extremely useful to so many people now um, but beyond that general agreement there are I'm, I'm well aware just how many differences there are around the debate and one in particular I, I think is quite significant and that is about the level that a basic income should be paid at and there is 
significant difference between those who believe that only a basic income you could live on uh, should be advocated and others who would say as a first step we need to go for something smaller so long as it's a basic income yeah. it's a secure yeah. layer yeah. of income um the only point i would make about that is that all of these differences are entirely understandable and i understand why people would like to see a a livable basic income to start with. Um, I'm hoping that they all understand that, that, that people like myself who research feasibility in terms of financial analysis um, have to say that initially a smaller basic income may be required. Um, what is vital is that people with different views about the levels of basic income should work closely together. And it's perfectly possible to do that. Um, and I think it's an essential um, task now okay. for researchers and advocates, first of all, in general, to work together, but also to work together, even if they have differing views about the level at which a basic income should be paid. Um, we can all learn from each other. We can all work together. And the debate will be more fruitful if, if we do that. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Malcolm. In fact, that's what we are trying to do also. I, mean, I know you're making, doing an excellent, you're, you're doing an excellent job with, the, um, with, with, your, with your UBI advocates. I think it's a, a splendid yeah. in, initiative. Everything is for um, producing additional tools for communication, interaction and collaboration. Thank you very much, dear Malcolm. It was uh, very beneficial for me, both regarding the Palgrave International Handbook of Basic Income, the book, this book, and also regarding your other books. Uh, thank you very much for everything, for your time. Well, thank you for your contribution to this now considerable global debate and, the, and, the, and particularly the contribution that UBI Advocates is making. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hope to see you during the online match. Indeed. Yeah, I shall visit it. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. -bye.